Now let's dig into the details of the piezo sensor. We'll look at the piezoelectric effect in some detail, and then also the charge amplifier interface circuit. Here's the piezo sensor that's included in the MyRio starter kit. It's produced by Measurement Specialties, and their DT series sensor is called a piezoelectric film sensor. Let's take a look at the construction of this device. We begin with a piece of piezo film polymer, placing a silver ink electrode on either side, and then connecting an electrical pin to each electrode. Then the whole works is bonded together and encased in plastic. This is actually a fairly thin device and it's also flexible. It's important to realize that the sensor as pictured here resembles a parallel plate capacitor. Now let's look at the piezoelectric effect itself. So taking that structure that looks a lot like a parallel plate capacitor, we connect a voltmeter to either electrode, and then in the neutral position at rest, there's nothing special observed. The voltmeter simply observes zero volts. Nothing unusual. Now, when you flex the sensor, that mechanical work translates into a charge displacement. We see plus charge accumulates on one side, negative charge accumulates on the other, and we then can see a non-zero voltage. The structure behaves like a charged capacitor. However, like any charged capacitor, eventually the charge will recombine, and so we find that the displacement is only temporary. Piezo. Piezo is the Greek root for press or squeeze, and that's where the name piezoelectric effect comes from. show you two standard symbols for the piezo sensor. One looks like this, where we have our pair of plates on either side, and we have the piezo material in between. Another standard symbol is a little more abbreviated, and it looks like this. The converse piezoelectric effect is also interesting. It says that if we apply a voltage to the structure, then the piezo material will deform. It's kind of nice. You can use the piezo sensor really in one of two different ways. For applications, we can use it to sense vibration and shock. We can also use it as an audio mic and as a speaker. Now let's take a look at a circuit that can interface this piezo sensor to the analog input. This is an op amp based charge amplifier. Viewing the piezo sensor as a current source, the charge amplifier produces a voltage which is proportional to the time rate of charge which is also the same thing as current. To get a better understanding of how the charge amplifier works, if this was an ideal op amp, we'd have zero current entering each of its terminals, and then with negative feedback in place, we would have zero volts on this terminal as well. I'm going to re relate this current from the current source and the current through the capacitor, as defined in this direction, call that IC. IC is the capacitance times the time rate of change of the output voltage. KCL applies at the inverting terminal and we write I plus IC equals zero. Substituting in the values that we already know and integrating both sides, we find that the output voltage is minus one over C times the charge Q. The capacitance controls the sensitivity of the charge amplifier. A smaller capacitor means that we are more sensitive to small changes. There are four considerations for making this into a practical circuit. We need to add a feedback resistance to provide a DC gain path. We need to raise the ground to one half the supply voltage because my real analog input is only zero to five volts. We want an op amp with very low input bias current. And the analog device's AD8541 only has about four picoamps of bias current. And finally, we want an op amp with rail-to-rail -rail capability to make full use of the analog input range. Well, here's my feedback resistor. 10 meg works nicely. 0 0.001 microfarads works well for many applications for the capacitor value. The voltage divider with equal valued resistors splits the supply voltage in half, 
and that gives us a value that's midway between zero and VDD when the sensor is at rest.